This is office for the day. So, Cape Town does get some weather. A real man. And it's absolutely pouring with rain outside. Our office for today is Mojo Market in Seapoint. Mojo sort of a mixed environment. So this is our office for the day. It's turned out to be pretty good. The internet's fantastic. Keep an eye on this, it's gonna be good. pretty good we haven't got there yet quickly finishing off our meeting and for you as some other creators might say it's time for b-roll <laughs> here we go yeah that's it for today's travel video review I've picked two videos they're both of Vancouver and let me just pop them up quickly this one over here is by June and this one on this side is Alex You love how you push me to the point of crazy and I love The Vancouver footage from these two videos is is great. I mean the, the editing's good, the lighting's good, the pace is good, the feel is good, everything's there except one thing and that is that engagement factor. And they have this in common with all the other travel videos we've reviewed in the series so far, is that they are the epitome of a YouTube travel video. What is a YouTube travel video? Well, basically, if you l look through the search, anybody who's made a video on YouTube that's called it a travel video, they've made a music video of their experiences traveling to another country. With all of these videos that I've reviewed so far, these music video style travel videos, I find that when you get to about two minutes, you start going like, this is really good, I'm enjoying it, but I'm, I'm, I'm done, like, I, I get it, you saw beautiful stuff. And it's lacking that information of how you feel about it, what other information was there, where are you exactly, you know, if I want to go there too, I need to be able to to understand like what's that place called so that you can find it again. I want to bring up another video now and that's going to be of somebody a little bit more famous and that is Sam Calder. Let's put it up in the corner over here. Now Sam Calder also went to Vancouver but this video is not a travel video, it's a travel vlog. And that's what today's video is about, is to differentiate the difference between a travel video and a travel vlog. Victoria, it's raining right now, but we're not gonna let that bring us down. We know we've never been here before and we're excited to see new things here in Canada. Whoa. Let's do it. Tom, nice to meet you, I'm Sam. Nice to meet you, Sam. Now, Sam Calder doesn't need more of an introduction. He's an incredible filmmaker. He has been running a fantastic YouTube channel for the last while and growing a massive following because of the style of his videos. With that, I'd like to address what is the difference between a travel video and a travel vlog. Technically speaking, the word vlog comes from the word blog, which is to write down a whole string of thoughts. And originally, a few years ago, a vlog was exactly the same thing, where somebody like me right now would set up a camera and talk to you. So technically what I'm doing right now is a vlog. But people like Casey Neistat came along and reinvented a vlog and made it a lot more entertaining and added sort of the second element into it, which is called B-roll. Now people like Sam Calder have reinvented what it means to make a travel video. He's taken the elements of a vlog on the one side where he talks and tells a story with a really cinematic b-roll and merge them into the perfect balance of entertainment and information. What makes this different to the travel videos we've been seeing is that there is a higher level of engagement. It's something that just before you start getting bored and wanting to fall asleep, it picks you up again and you're back like what new information and then just as the information becomes too much, they're back to the b-roll of like oh this is beautiful. So it's like a roller coaster of up and down of information going through this video and it keeps you more engaged. Everybody knows nowadays if you want to make a cool video you've got to tell a story. We're reaching a point in travel video world where just showing b-roll footage is not enough. 
If you think about it, the word B-roll has the word B. It's not called A-roll because it's actually the second most important thing. The story and the talking to camera is primary. It's, it's something that adds value to the viewer. Added to that, I can also say that the quality of the footage, although yes, the better the quality, the better the video, is also not paramount to making an engaging video. Casey Neistat started off with making really like crazy warped shaky videos, but they told such a good story that he kept people going right through to the end. If you want people to watch your travel videos, you've got to break the B-roll up with just a little bit of information. It doesn't have to be you. You can talk to other people to get that information into the video as well. And like I said in the last video, I don't just want to tell you that that's what you need to do. I also want to show you a little bit of like how this looks and how this works. So uh, Darren's just actually gone off to go do some shots of the um, Mojo Market where we are today for Office for the Day. And what I want to do is I'm going to play two 15 second edits. One which it's only B-roll and the second one which will be a little bit of engagement with a person and us talking. And then I would like you to compare the two and tell me which one was more engaging. I know talking to camera is not everybody's favorite thing and not everybody's really good at it, but you've got to practice. The more you do it, the better you're going to get. If you want to start out and, and sort of grow a following, take example from the people who are doing it right. Peter McKinnon, Casey Neistat, Sam Calder, these guys, and they all talk to camera. Tell a story, stay engaging, have fun, and safe travels. I'm out.